welcome back everyone. My name is Chloe. I'm the dietitian at Optimum Health Solutions. As some of you may or may not know, during November here at Optimum, we have a focus on cancer and cancer prevention and treatment. So I thought I'd work that into one of my videos and also work in a couple of tips that might help you coming up towards the silly season. Now, one of the things that quite often gets overlooked both in regards to cancer risk and also our general health is our alcohol consumption. Now, alcohol can have a huge impact on both of these things. Alcohol consumption can increase your risk of, of cancer in two ways. It can increase it both directly and indirectly. So it can directly increase your risk of cancer in your gastrointestinal tract. So that's areas that the alcohol physically comes into contact with, such as your mouth, throat, um, larynx, esophagus, stomach, and also your bowel. And indirectly, your risk of cancer is increased by alcohol consumption because of the impact that alcohol can have on your body weight. So like with anything, if you have too much and you don't burn it off properly, too much alcohol can, in, can cause a higher uh, body fat percentage, a higher rate of adipose tissue, which is the tissue around your stomach um, and around your central organs. And that can also increase your risk of bowel, uh, pancreatic, liver and kidney cancers. So it does have quite a wide ranging impact. Um, so what are the recommendations then? So in terms of improving your risk factors, both from a, a cancer prevention and a general health risk, we do recommend having at least two alcohol free days a week. So that's two days a week of zero alcohol. Give yourself a challenge, start off with two days non-consecutively. Then if you can work up to more of a not drinking during the week and only drinking on weekends type of situation, it really will do, really will do you well in the long term. To make it easier for yourself, try having some good non-alcoholic non beverages on hand. Try things like sparkling mineral water with some lemon, lime, mint, um, raspberry, anything you want to make it more exciting. Try something like a non-alcoholic apple cider, for example, to make it feel like you're still drinking. Or even um, you know, some non-alcoholic soft drinks are a really good, good alternative. Um, on days when you do drink, try to limit it to just two or three drinks at a time. I know it can be really hard, particularly getting into silly season and weddings and that sort of thing. But just to give you an idea of how much of an impact it does have, a bottle of white wine, for example, contains about 400 calories, which is roughly a quarter of the average person's daily energy requirement. Stepping that up to red wine, you're looking at about 600 calories. And then if you go up to a six pack of beer, which I know a lot of blokes would um, consume quite easily, you're looking at about seven to 800 calories, which is almost half of that daily energy requirement. So if you're adding that in on top of what you're already eating, it can have a huge impact. So generally what the take home message is, try not to drink too much. Keep, it in, keep in mind that magic M word, moderation. Give yourself a couple of alcohol-free days during the week and days when you do go out drinking, if you've got events and things, try to limit your intake by alternating your drinks. So if you're having an alcoholic beverage, try and have you know, a non-alcoholic one after that. Try and um, you know, make it last longer, get a tall glass for example, so that you've still got something in your hand. Just try not to go too hard, um, but still enjoy yourself. So have a great, great silly season guys and hopefully I'll see you soon, thanks.